Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today we are talking about everything that happened in February and our plans for March in our homeschool. So does anyone feel like January was the slowest month in history? Like it was like three months long and then February just like flew by because that's how I feel. I cannot believe it's already, well today's March 1st so I'm fil filming this exactly after February wrapped up and I can't believe it is March. So I will try to remember everything that happened in February, but I feel like it was like the eye. So in February, one of the changes that we started the month with was my daughters were no longer doing moving beyond the page units together. So what we did is my oldest daughter, she is starting, she did a unit from the nine to 11 age range, the fifth grade age range. And it was really one that I just had like laying around. I was like, let's see how this works because that level becomes independent. And so she was working on that. And then I was still doing the younger seven to nine age level with my middle daughter where that one is more teacher led, parent led. So that is how we started the month where that got split and the first couple lessons were a little rough um just because of things we like weren't really uh, you know aware would be issues because we're so used to like sitting together doing those well you know I'm trying to do the lesson with my middle daughter but my older daughter's sitting there and she's like can you guys stop talking like I'm trying to read which you know so like we really had to kind of like adjust for that um you know us you know not being annoying or loud when someone is trying to read and concentrate so we definitely had to make some adjustments there at that same time we also um kind of redid our homeschool room a little bit we are running out of room so we have like a small black table that we all kind of sit at but it's small um, the chairs we have are small and so as my kids get bigger we're just running out of room they don't have enough room to spread out their books and stuff and so we kind of rearranged it and we moved my oldest daughter's desk out and so now she can sit by herself at the desk but she's like still with us in the homeschool room so it's not ideal but it's what we're doing for the time being and so that was some adjustments um, we did finally get into a good flow it took us about a week we learned we got headphones you know, we just kind of had to adjust what we were used to. And so both the Moving Beyond the Page units went well. Um, I probably won't be reviewing them individually. Maybe. We'll see. I have so many videos planned coming out that like those types of videos are good, but I feel like I'm putting out better ones. So I will eventually get to reviewing the individual units they did, but overall, everything went good. It kind of helped me build a little bit more confidence for having them working on separate things. So that is how we started the month. I did end up traveling for work in February. I want to say like the second week I was gone for a couple days. Everything went fine. The great. Um, it was right before Valentine's Day and so I wanted to get to the gather around Valentine's Day unit, but we we just didn't because I was gone the week before. I think Valentine's Day was on like Wednesday, so it just didn't work out for us. Um, my kids unfortunately were sick at the end of the month, and so that kind of took a couple days away from us um, in February. And so nothing hugely crazy happened in February. Um, I did film all last week. So today's Friday when I'm filming this. I filmed a Monday through Thursday of vlogs. So you guys will see that. So you'll kind of see us doing what we've been doing through February. You'll kind of see like the last week of February. I feel like I've been doing so good with my son's curriculum and like just homeschool. I've been like trying so hard to be consistent. Like we're doing school today. You know, we're gonna spend time getting his school done. Like him, making him a priority, but also, and I know he's only five, but kind of like making him a little bit like, responsible like have you done your school yet you know kind of building those early responsibilities so that early independence just like I did with my daughter um it's still 100% on me I'm the one that needs to initiate school and get it done but putting it in his mind like we have school today this is what needs to get done before we can do this and so that has been working like so so good um we did start two new curriculums for him this month well actually maybe three new curriculum in February I don't know. So we got the Bob's workbook. So the Bob's books, we use those, we read those, but I just found that they have like an actual workbook that goes along with the books. So I don't know if we started that at the end of January, but either way, it's been working 
freaking amazingly. So he does two pages in that, which they correlate with whatever book he's learning to read. And so then we'll read his book. And so that right now is kind of taking place of like all language art. We did have the Good and the Beautifuls uh, pre-K prep, whatever that middle course is uh, in between preschool and kindergarten. But I actually gave it to my mother-in-law because she's teaching a phonics co-op class at my son's co-op. And so he's in that class. So on Mondays, one of his classes is phonics and they're using that pre-k prep so i was like well obviously i can't use it because she has it but you know he's kind of getting that there and what we're doing is working really well he's reading books he's you know building his confidence with like letter sounds and stuff so that's what we've been doing for his like language arts and then for uh, math we actually just decided to jump into his good and the beautiful kindergarten level math he's always been very good with numbers and like adding and knowing like he can count to 100 he can add small numbers like and he just he just did it like I there was never like me sitting down with him I mean we did a couple like preschool math curriculums but he's just always been very quick with numbers and so I was like you know what let's try the good and beautiful if it's too high of a level if it's not working pause it until after summer but we are on lesson seven and it's working fantastically he absolutely loves it the way it's set up is working great for us because we're looking at the same page. He knows what to expect. I'm not flipping between like a teacher's guide or other things. We have his little math box and he loves like the little manipulatives. So his math is doing great. And then we did just start this past week his science for kindergarten. So starting some of his curriculum for kindergarten a little bit early, but I do that because I'm like, I wanna know if it's gonna work. You know, before I plan out an entire homeschool year, buy resources, things like that, like, is this something that's going to work? And so we are using the Sunlight Kindergarten Science Program. So it's just the science portion. And we just did week one. So his first unit, which was on ants. And again, the program worked awesome. It's just enough for him. Like we read like one or two pages in like our book about ants he answers a couple questions and then once a week there's like an, a project to do and everything just went great like just flawless so his language arts math and science like we have found the perfect formula for him it takes us like less than 30 minutes to complete his schooling he's excited for schooling he's really enjoying science and math like to where he will talk about it like when it's not school time and so that is how I know he's enjoying it and that's what I want like I don't want him to like dread school when we're just barely starting kindergarten so he's having a lot of fun he's really starting to get interested in learning Learning. and so that has made me feel a little better because I have felt so chaotic with him like just not finding something that works well not being able to judge what level he's at very well and so it's all been super great this past month him and all the stuff that we've been using so that is really I think all I have as far as February updates um now let's talk about March so March is I want to say a big month for homes the homeschool community I do feel like this is when we start seeing a lot of new releases for curriculum we see a lot of curriculum companies placing or putting sales out there you know start shopping for your new year's curriculum everyone on youtube is like saying bunch of stuff on it so obviously i'm here for all of it i will be posting my own videos about curriculum i will be watching videos about curriculum and it's curriculum season so um it can be overwhelming it can be it can make you impulsively buy stuff so you just have to like use your judgment um i will say i proudly just placed my final order this week for all of my curriculum for next year so i've officially purchased all my curriculum it will all be here this weekend and so i'm going to start organizing it and filming my official curriculum pick videos which should be out in mid March. Um, so I'm excited to share all of that with you guys. Besides like my curriculum pick videos, I am partnering with a bunch of curriculum companies to share resources. So I'm going to share stuff I've used before. I'm going to be sharing stuff the first time I've seen it, we're going to be looking at it together. And so hopefully, you know, I don't expect just because you watch my channel, you use the same curriculum that I end up using, but I hope by sharing other resources, um, I'm, you know, 
educating you on other things that are out there. Just because I don't use something, there's probably a completely different reason than you think why I don't use it. Mine is mostly like scheduling wise, how teacher intensive it is. That is really what I look for in the curriculum I choose just because of our situation. I'm a working homeschooling mom. My kids are in co-op classes. So like I just look at things a little bit different, but that is also why I share things that we don't always use in our homeschool. All right, we talked about all the updates, all the curriculum. I have piles of like stuff like all around me in front of me. So it's like jogging my memory, like what I need to talk about. Um, but let's talk about what's happening in March. So in March, I want to say like March 11th, I'm just pulling a random date, but around there is our official third quarter. So I feel like again, blink of an eye are, um, no, it will be the end of our third quarter starting our fourth quarter. So yeah, like I feel like we just got our halfway point, but our third quarter is about to be over. We're about to start our fourth quarter. And my plan in our fourth quarter was to switch my oldest daughter to fully moving me on the page, which we kind of tested that out in February. But now what she's going to be doing is she's going to be completing the last concept. So the last six units of moving me on the pages fifth grade year. So moving me on the page sells year long curriculum for grade levels and they break it into four concepts or like four quarters so I bought the end of fifth grade quarter from moving me on the page it's six units and so my sick my oldest daughter who's in fifth grade currently she will be finishing up this school year doing those six units so she is becoming very independent um, not that I won't be there to help her and like work on the stuff with her, but she's going to be using those units to do language arts, science, and social studies, and then she has her Saxon math. So the reason I'm doing that is because I wanted to see how it all was going to work out. And so this is kind of the bin I have right here. Um, pull these out. So she has her six units in here. And then each unit has like a corresponding literature book that she reads. It's a literature based curriculum. I'm just going to pull out these two to show you. So her very first units that she's going to be doing her language arts unit. She's going to be reading a wrinkle in time. Um, for, for language arts. And then at the same time, she'll be working on her science, social studies, space unit reading this. So those are her first two units. So she's works on a language arts unit and then the corresponding uh, science or social studies unit. And then, so we are working down here. This is the fourth order. So concept four, so space, a wrinkle in time. And then she'll also be doing these four units too. So six units, she's gonna wrap up the end of our school year. Now, what I will say is the plan is to still continue doing IEW in between and both my daughters will be doing IEW together. Um, we just finished up week 16. So we're moving on to 17. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to finish this year. I really wanted to, but I don't want to overwhelm either of my daughters with too much writing. So I think IEW may stay as a joint subject, but Beowulf Grammar um, will not. So we just finished we just reached like the halfway point in Beowulf grammar. And so what actually worked out really well, which wasn't planned is I just ordered these to have them printed from Barnes and Noble press. And so this is like the third quarter and fourth quarter. So these are like the second half of Beowulf grammar, just no workbooks. Well, I'm going to have my middle daughter continue working on Beowulf grammar. I love this program. I think it's awesome. I just don't want my oldest daughter doing too much. Her moving beyond the page units are very thorough. They're very detailed, especially at these higher levels. She has lots of language arts, grammar, writing, vocabulary activities she needs to complete. So she will be stopping Beowulf grammar, but my middle daughter will continue on, hopefully finishing it this year. Um, so that is a pretty big chain that we'll be making in March. Um, again, just kind of like the separation of certain things. So also um, we have a couple, like we have two lessons left in Apologia. Um, I think we're just on, we're on lesson 12 now and it goes to lesson 14. So we are going to wrap that up together as a family. Even though my sixth grader is doing science on her own, it apology, it shouldn't take us too long to kind of just wrap up and complete. And then I need to decide what I'm doing with my middle daughter for science. Um, so we also have gather around US history that we are on 
lesson 13 and there's 20 lessons. So we have um, seven lessons left to complete, I believe. And again, I'm kind of like, you know, I don't want to put too much on my oldest daughter, but I also kind of want to wrap up some of these things that she started together. So that is what I'm going to be working on in the month, month of March, because once we get to April, a lot of that stuff will be ended. Regardless if I would have made these changes or not, we would have been done with ap Apologia. We would have been done with our history program. We would have been done with, I don't even know what else at this point. So now it's kind of like, okay, what am I filling in? What, you know, how do I kind of keep them balanced? My girls do work better when they both have things to keep themselves occupied. So like if one finishes early, I need to find something for them to do. If the other is still working, it just works better that way. Um, my middle daughter has been doing a lot of Night Zookeeper, which is like that online kind of language arts program. So that's been super good filling in as like we're adjusting to different things. I have tons of unit studies. I have tons of resources I could fill in, but I'm just trying to see like, what are they interested in? What is working best? Um, so that is kind of what March is going to look like. Also, I'm traveling again in March for work. So that just, you know, has that dynamic. Um, because of like kind of my work travel schedule and the kids co-ops, they have co-ops every Monday and Friday, but they also have tons of activities just during the, like they have park days, they have field trips they're going on. So because of like all these scheduling things, I haven't been able to get them back into their like activities. We used to have weekly activities. We did it all like, I think it was like last, I don't know, April through like November, like all three of my kids were in activities every week. We were super busy. So we took a break over the holidays, but I just haven't been able to find a schedule that works for all of us where they're not gonna be missing classes all the time because you have to pay for it whether you're there or not. And so at this point, I just can't find like an activity schedule that fits. Um, so it sucks. I mean, they definitely wanna be in their activities, but we're trying to do as much as possible. Um, they prefer their co-op field trips and activities over their sports weekly. And so they they were able to make that choice. Um, I have been using out school a lot to kind of fill in just, you know, when they are kind of bored at home and we have a, a down week. So I'm actually going to be making a video all about out school because I don't think it, it's talked about enough, especially in the homeschool community. And I found some great classes recently. So we have been using that as a tool to kind of keep them busy, but it's like a little bit more lax of a scheduling thing. Um, I don't see them getting back into like weekly activities until summer, to be honest until their co-op ends for the season. Their co-op is just taking up a lot of time right now, especially all three of them are in different age levels. And so their events are all over the place. So um, probably won't get them back into like their sports. My son does jujitsu, my middle daughter does gymnastics and my oldest does volleyball. I don't see those coming back until summer, which it, it just is what it is. It's the season we're in. We can't make the classes happen. So I think that's my update. <laughs> I don't know. I'll stop filming and then I'll be like, oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you guys all these things. But either way, I have so many videos coming out, like to the point to where I don't even know like when to like upload them for like release date because there's so many that it's like, I think this video is more important than this video. And so I'm trying to keep it at like three videos a week. I don't want to overwhelm or be like way too much, but they are like time sensitive. I mean, I want to get a lot of stuff out before you guys start curriculum shopping. So if you're like, whoa, Ashley, chill out with the videos, it will slow down later on. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Have a great day, guys. Bye.